If you've ever walked into a grocery store, you've undoubtedly seen a product advertised as Italian seasoning or Italian herbs and spices. Well, actually I should rephrase that because if you've walked into an Italian grocery store, you've never seen such a thing. Do you wanna hear what Wikipedia has to say about Italian seasoning? As we say in Italy, but I'm sono tutta orecchie. Italian seasoning is a blend of ground herbs that commonly includes some combination of basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, garlic powder, sage, or coriander. The blend varies by brand with many having vague, non-specific ingredient lists. So, in this Italian seasoning, uh, what they do is they put uh, everything together. Pretty much, yes. And then they give the name Italian. Yeah. Without a defined taste, a defined flavor profile. It tastes of everything. Today, Eva's gonna walk us through some of the most common herbs and spices that Italians use and how they use them. Now, I can't help but notice that you have two pans here in front of us. What's up with that? Yes, Alper, because uh, I would like to cook two dishes, but they can be the example of the Italian uh, herbs rule. Okay. So as we go to the several ingredients, I put them uh, or in this pan or in this one. Okay. I'm curious to see if as we go, I can guess what you're gonna make. We'll see. All right, we're starting off with the universal basics of salt and pepper. Salt in the Italian cuisine, the Italian food is used everywhere. And for everywhere, I mean, uh, I mean, really everywhere, maybe except uh, coffee in the morning. <laughs> it's real that we can't eat, we shouldn't eat a lot of salt. But it's also real that if you don't use it in the proper way, your ingredients don't really taste. Your dish don't really, doesn't really taste. I think pasta water is the thing that trips people up the most because they see how much salt you put in, but they don't realize that the pasta doesn't absorb all of that salt. Most of the salt is still left in there. It's more of a method for salting the pasta. In fact, quick shout out to our friend Paul, who did the most incredible scientific analysis of how much of the salt is actually absorbed by the pasta to prove that you're not over salting, getting too much sodium by properly salting the pasta water. Anyway, I'll, I'll probably, I'll put a link somehow to his analysis down there, it was amazing. Don't be scared when you season your pasta because the pasta water need salt. Maybe you can be a little bit more, uh, how do you say, you can pay attention maybe if you want to when you make maybe the sauce or you use it as uh, in your salad or something like that. So I anticipated this, I have another salt because I'm guessing you want them for both dishes. Eh si, Alper. Now the pepper is interesting. Okay, I grew up learning that pepper is akin to salt. It goes in everything. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper. You're the salt to my pepper. So I always used to put pepper in absolutely everything that was even remotely savory, but I've observed that you actually pretty rarely use black pepper. In Italy, we use black pepper. We don't use as much black pepper as you use here in America, this for sure. And there, there are several dishes that uh, doesn't, they don't really require black pepper. Mm -hmm. One of the useful example can be a simple tomato sauce. Now, having had it without black pepper, I can't imagine it with it. It would be just way too strong of a flavor for such a light, fresh, flavor as that. Then it doesn't mean that if you really like black pepper, you can't add a sprinkle of it on top of your dish. But maybe sometimes we don't really need. For sure you need the black pepper when, for example, you make a ragu. Mm -hmm. Because a ragu has a very strong taste. When you make, for example, a meat stew, think about peppers. Yeah. It's based on black pepper. If you have something that it's very light, very delicate, uh, maybe we can also skip it. So do you, are you gonna include it in any of your dishes today? No. There you go. 
It's time for one of my favorites, pepperoncino. I'm Calabrian, so here I have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> An addiction. <laughs> My problem is the addiction. So, if you're a Calabrian like me, when it comes to peperoncino, you put it everywhere. Also in the coffee, maybe in the morning. If you're not Calabrian, you don't really use it in most of the Italian dishes. It's like uh, bolognese ragù is not spicy at all. If you think also, for example, the Genovese from Napoli is not spiced. If you are Calabrian, you add it everywhere. If you are not Calabrian, maybe you skip it. You know, as an American, I come from a country where we're exposed to tons of Mexican food and Asian food and stuff. So like, I might not have the highest level of uh, spice tolerance in the world, but like I love spicy food. Lots of Americans love spicy food. But when I'm with your parents, it doesn't matter how many times they see me add pepperoncino to my food. They should know by now I love spicy food. If I look at a pepperoncino, they're so used to other Italians who don't like spicy food that they're always like, be careful, it's spicy, it's spicy. I'm like, yeah, I, I know, That's, I like it, I like spicy food. Yeah, but because we know that it's like in Italy, all we Calabrians are famous because really we put pepperoncino everywhere. So it happens that if you have a friend from, I don't know, maybe Milan or Turin, they don't really are used to the spiciness. So, are you gonna put pepperoncino in either of your dishes? Actually, I'm going to put pepperoncino in both of my dishes. Of course, you're Calabrian. We'll symbolically place <laughs> one pepperoncino there. How's that work? Here's a good one, garlic. This one has caused quite a bit of confusion. We Italians love garlic. We use garlic a lot. How can we define uh, garlic? It's like a fundamental Italian flavor. But not so strong <laughs> as you think here in America. It's like here when they want to do something Italian, they just put a ton of garlic, pretending that uh, is the biggest, uh, the most common Italian flavor. No, garlic is the one ingredient of the Italian food. Very, how do you say, it's very rare to find the flavor of the garlic, like the predominant flavor of one of our dishes. Normally you just put one clove in for a little bit of flavor and you usually take it right out and you also remove the, the germ. The Most garlic. of the time because the strong flavor of garlic is in the germ. So are you gonna use any garlic in your two dishes today? Yes. Boom. Both. All right. And you're gonna use this whole thing? No. <laughs> Parsley. If you uh, get the general opinion, I would say of the blogosphere, the cookbook sphere, Parsley is just something that you have to ha add on top of any dish in order to make it Italian. You always got to add chopped parsley on top. So that's why I saw a lot of carbonara with parsley. On oh yeah, carbonara, um, aglio olio, pepperoncino, and parsley. Fettuccine Alfredo. Like so many pasta dishes, you just put, put a bunch of parsley on top. You don't put parsley in a carbonara, you don't use, to use parsley in a cacio e pepe, you don't put uh, parsley as a garnish on a margherita pizza. Most of the time, we use parsley with fish. Fish pastas too, right? For example, risotto ai frutti di mare. Uh -huh. You put parsley because it goes very well. Or even puttanesca, which is just the only seafood in it is anchovies, but you have that you seafood put, flavor, so. You put some parsley. Yeah. Spaghetti with clams, spaghetti alle vongole, you put parsley. So most of the time we use it with fish. Then sometimes we use this also with meat. If you want to, I don't know, like to make your ragu smell a little bit better. Mm -hmm. For example, you can use just the 
stem. The stem. So you give uh, a little bit of smell, a little bit of flavor, but actually you don't use a lot of parsley. So does this ingredient belong with any of your dishes today? Yes, here. Okay. Here we have some sage, which smells very good. Now this one I'm really curious about because as far as I know, I, I'm only aware of one very specific use case in Italian cuisine where sage is used, but I don't know if I'm wrong or not. Allora, what you're talking about is the famous burro e salvia. <laughs> Sage and butter sauce, usually used for like ravioli. It's an amazing sauce, but it's maybe the only time I can think of where you've reached for the sage for Italian food. When it comes to pasta, most of the time uh, is used uh, with uh, for pairing, with pairing the butter because the two together they go very very well. Sage is used a lot also in. Um, Marinated, mar mar marinades, marinades for meat. Oh. Think, for example, a wild boar. Wild boar. Because wild boar has a very strong taste, and usually you should marinate it at least for 12 hours. You put also the sage because it helps to reduce that strong and wild taste of the wild boar. No wonder I've never seen you use it. It's a little hard to find wild boar here. And actually sage by itself is, uh, we use also like an antipasto. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I was forgetting about maybe the one of the most delicious things I've ever had. Okay, I need to explain. On the Pasta Grammar tour, we went to this farm where I was first introduced to fried sage leaves. They dip them in a thin batter and then fry them phenomenally good. I can't believe I was forgetting about that. All right, so is sage going into either of our dishes? No. No Not sage. Today. All right. Well, we've had our parsley, we've had our sage, which means we need our rosemary and thyme. Sorry, you knew that joke had to be coming at some point. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the song? Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Anyway. Uh... <laughs> we use rosemary and thyme. 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 Not thyme. Va bene, team rosmarino. We use the team rosmarino, obviously, with meat. Also here in America, how can you roast a piece of meat without rosmarino e team? They go perfect with chicken. One of the best dishes that we have in Italy, but I don't think just in Italy, all over the world is polle e patate con team rosmarino. Chicken and potatoes with thyme and rosmarino, yeah, yeah. It's a must. We don't use rosemary with fish, while we use, sometimes we can use also thyme with fish. The flavor, the, the smell of thyme goes also with some fish. But basically, we use with meat. All right, well, this will give me a big clue about what you're cooking today. Are you gonna put any rosemary or thyme? No. No. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I never ever would have thought of this as being Italian, but you use it a lot. In fact, I don't think I ever had anything in with this before I met you. Marjoram. I, I couldn't even tell you what a marjoram plant looks like. Does it grow on a tree? And you shouldn't be so surprised because marjoram is a traditional, is a re 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 originated from the Mediterranean area. So, being us in the middle of the Mediterranean, yes, we use majorana. Now, how we use majorana? For example, we show people a lot of savory pies. Mm -hmm. 
per esempio torta pasqualina, farinata di zucca, wish also ranze e shura, because the flavor of majorana goes very very well with this kind of dishes. Majorana goes also well with meat, so if, in, if you have the fresh one you can use it also to marinate mm -hmm. your meat. As a Calabrian, I can say that, for example, in our cuisine, it's not so used. It's used a lot instead in the north and in Sicily. And so, yeah, I've noticed it a lot in Sicilian food, like all the Sicilian pizzas you made, they all used marjoram. All right, well, does marjoram have a place in either of our dishes? Not today. No. So you're not making Sicilian pizza? No, I'm taking a pot a I pieced that together. I don't know, maybe there's a Sicilian pan pizza I don't know about. He was dreaming about this finchone, but not today. Oregano. Now this one's a little bit scandalous because you, a Calabrian, is using Sicilian oregano. Now let's hear a clear of the situation. I need to go back to Calabria and... I want to be sure that I can go back. So, the best oregano in all Italy is the Calabrian oregano. Because it grows wild, the people during summer, they go and pick the oregano, then they dry, and the flavor and the smell of the Calabrian oregano is unique. So, because they know how to sell better their product than us Calabrian, in America I found the Sicilian one. It's anyway, is a good oregano. You can't buy the oregano already in a jar. Yeah. I, see, I know, but you can't buy oh, it because oh, it doesn't you shouldn't. Take. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You can. <laughs> no, yes, but I went, you can't. Don't, don't, don't do. You shouldn't buy the oregano there because it doesn't taste. It blew me away when I first started having it like this. Because the smell, the flavor of this is completely different. Now, how we use oregano in the southern Italian uh, cooking, because this is more a southern mm -hmm. herbs. We, my family, maybe because we really like uh, oregano, we love oregano, we put oregano everywhere. <laughs> like we put oregano on fish, we put oregano on meat, we put oregano, for example, on a summer tomato salad. It goes perfect also with eggplants. We use it a lot. But, Maybe. It's, but it's pretty concentrated in the south. It's more a southern, a southern spice. I'm going to use, I'm going to use it. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know, what Ava does with this is actually we'll take this out and then put it into a jar. Like you sort of break off. You don't have to keep it in the... Uh, we keep if we want to do the Albanian pasta. Last but certainly not least is maybe the most Italian herb there is. And it's also my favorite herb because I love basil. It smells, as you're waving that, I'm just getting like hit in the face with it's basil. The, it's the smell of summer. Basil, uh, it's uh, just a gift of, uh, how do you say, Mother Nature, mm -hmm. it's a gift. The best pair with basil is tomato sauce. So most of the time, when you use tomatoes, you use basil. I said most because we have several exceptions, like mm -hmm. every rule has exceptions. But if I'm thinking about a plate of spaghetti with tomato sauce, for sure this is one of the main ingredients. Because without this, your spaghetti with tomato sauce doesn't taste as good as they should. We don't really use basil with fish. It's not that you can't, but usually with fish we prefer parsley. And here is a little bit of a rule, mm -hmm. maybe. It's very rare that they t in the Italian food we use together parsley and basil. Yeah, because I was just thinking again about puttanesca, which is a tomato sauce where you don't find basil, but yeah, you find parsley in that. Usually we use or one or the other one. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just a person. I'm not just a person in all my life that loves basil more than me. 
And this person is my cousin Domenico. It's strange. <laughs> His favorite sandwich uh -huh. as a kid was a sandwich with basil. A basil sandwich? Wait, yes. What is a basil sandwich? Two slices of bread with <laughs> leaves of basil inside. Close and eat. <laughs> you don't want any mortadella, non prosciutto, no capicollo, no salame, no soprassata. No, his favorite sandwich was bread <laughs> and basil. I want to try a basil sandwich now. Come on. <laughs> so, I really like it and I'm going obvious. To use the basil, I'm going to use my basil here. Definitely not with the parsley, huh? Not with the parsley. I think I'm having some idea, not of the specific dishes you're gonna make, but of the various possibilities here and flavor profiles, but maybe I should just let you get it cooking. Basil, salt, garlic, spicy pepper. This screams to me tomato sauce. As we said before, I'm going to use one clove of garlic and I'm going to peel it. I'm going to use uh, the basil and remember that uh, you can't cut basil with a knife because otherwise your basil will become a bitter. So, what I'm going to do is take this and put direct inside. And of course, I'm going to use some salt. While my tomato sauce is cooking, I'm starting work on my second dish. So I'm guessing from the parsley and the oregano, that fish is on the menu. I'm adding to the olive oil some water. This time I'm going to chop my garlic, but before chopping it, I need to take out the germ, this part. So all the bad garlic flavor is there. And we have just the good part of the garlic. With a dry pepper like that, I'm just break it. Could you use fresh chili pepper? Yes, if you have fresh, you can use fresh. The reason why I'm going to use the dry because I don't have a fresh Calabrian pepper. Uh, remember that after you break the pepper with your hands, don't touch your eyes. Already here we have a tale of two smells. Like this with the tomato and basil just has that amazing fresh tomato sauce smell. And then here because the garlic is chopped and with the oregano and the spicy pepper we have just a much stronger savory smell. Swordfish. Fish is bad, yeah. And because this this is fish, we can garnish with some parsley. With my tomato sauce, I'm going to make a dish that is common around all the Mediterranean areas, but every country has its own version. For sure, you know a version of this dish with the name shakshuka. In Italy, we do it in our own way, but we call it uovo in purgatorio. Does that mean eggs in purgatory? Yes, because after you cook the eggs and there is the contrast between the red, the white, the orange of the yolk, they look like a soul in the flame of the purgatory. 
<laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> this is where the name come from. I'm going to add the summer basil because it works very well. I know that this is not an herb. This is not a spice. But for sure is a fundamental Italian seasoning. Ah, this looks and smells like a very well-seasoned meal. The smell of both are amazing, they look amazing, and I'm pretty hungry. I'm gonna try the swordfish while you try the eggs, all right? Buon appetito. Buon appetito. I'm in heaven. I'm not in purgatory, I'm in heaven. <laughs> okay, I really want to try the eggs. You want some swordfish and some bread? I think the biggest thing I've learned is that when it comes to seasoning, it's not so much the addition of things that makes a big difference, it's the removal of things. Like that, we would just lose all the unity of taste if you added basil into this. If you had too much, you just destroy a dish. So you need to put all the things that, that need that ingredient, like in this case, this goldfish, or in this case, the eggs, they need. Less is more. Always, except when it comes to cheese. There, more is more. <laughs> Guys, we hope you learned something new about Italian seasoning today. If you try applying this to your own cooking, please send us a picture on Instagram or Facebook, at Pasta Grammar. Speaking of which, we have a pasta grammarian in action. Tilly made an amazing looking carbonara. It looked very well seasoning. That's a case where black pepper, you want a lot of black pepper. And you don't want parsley. No parsley, there was brava. no parsley on this carbonara. Brava Tilly, brava. All right guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.